Hi and welcome to my channel. It's Rebecca, also known as 4Kids at 147. And recently, very recently, I have kitted up this Diamond Art Club image that is of uh, Minion Love, it's called. But it is a big painting. It is 186 by 51. Now, I know some people are put off by big paintings for a variety of reasons. Sometimes it is due to the amount of time that it will take. And sometimes it is the comfort and the ease of working on one of these paintings with them being so big. So I'm going to show you today what I do with big paintings to sort of help to ease that. Um, I'm also going to touch on what I do when the canvas has a clear cover like this one um, because personally myself when I'm working on a painting with a clear cover I find myself chasing a colour and I will end up with no order to it and that doesn't work for me doesn't work for the way my brain works so if you find you can't cope with the chasing of the painting the same then maybe that that will be a helpful tip for you but this one says 186 centimeters by 51. now i am going to work on it from this side i'm going to start here and i am primarily going to work on it on its side so yes the symbols will also be on its side but you sort of can still get used to that. You can always tip your head just to check the symbol before you take it out of your, you know, your diamond pot um, to make sure that you've got the right one. But then, for example, this arrow faces to the right. OK, I'm not even sure if you can see that. Let me zoom in. Let me zoom in, see if it can <laughs> move it over. OK, that's my full zoom. So this painting here has an arrow and it faces to the right, okay, when you look at it the normal way. So all tip your heads with me um, and you'll see that the arrow faces to the right. So when I'm picking my symbol, I will look for the one that faces to the right. In this case, it is an 820. I will take out that pot of diamonds. But then I will go back to the normal way of looking or the normal way for me and I will diamond paint in my head saying up arrow because that is the way it looks to me. I've made sure I've got the right one but then I'm doing the up arrow and I will do all of the up arrow in that section before putting the diamond away, diamonds away. And that's how I tend to sort of think as I'm diamond painting with a big one. Um, because I always find that if you can have, you know, the weight of the canvas either next to you, resting on your lap if you work in a small space or away from you is often easier. Um, I will work on this point, on this, on my small table, which is probably even smaller than this, and it will shuffle over a bit and shuffle back a bit. But I tend to find it, it's not enough that it sort of hangs over and damages anything in any way. I will work on this until it gets to the point where it sort of hangs off my desk a little bit and starts getting to the point where maybe I'm hitting the diamonds. Normally, my stomach's hitting the diamonds, let's be real. Um, my stomach's hitting the diamonds and therefore there's a risk of them falling off. It's at that point that I will always turn the diamond painting around. The diamond painting that you've not worked on is always going to be the best one that you in effect are in contact with a lot of the time. And quite often I will just sit this whole roll on my lap. I don't work on these big diamond paintings as the only diamond painting I work on. I like to mix it up with some smaller diamond paintings. And I find that means that I can get through a big one without feeling as though I'm not getting anywhere. Does that even make sense? So big ones are really fun to do, but don't think of them as something that you want to do to finish. Think of them as a nice ongoing 
projects. Um, and then what I do with the actual canvas, so if I just start rolling this up the other way, so I can prep the canvas from this end. So, oh, look, see, look, I've picked up bits of fluff. I have had this unrolled <laughs> a few times. So, so that I can deal with sort of this end of the canvas, I'll show you what I use. And I find that this works on pretty much all big canvases. If I get a big canvas that doesn't have the clear cover but has the opaque one, I tend to try not to peel back the cover paper and flatten it again if I know I'm going to work on it rolled up because it's not as forgiving as the round ones are. The Sorry, as the clear cover ones are. The ones with poured glue are a lot more forgiving at being rolled up and laid flat again. So this is the last section I'm going to do, partly because it's got a few more minions. I like to keep the exciting part of the painting for the end. But what I use for preparation is I use pipe blagging. Now, some people will use pool noodles. However, I find them a bit thick. Um, I like to use pipe blagging. It, there are many different types, many different thicknesses, and I've used a few different ones. They all work just the same. They're all just as good. Uh, it is A lot of it is personal preference. And I like to cut them, I prefer to cut them a little bit shorter than the painting. You may prefer to have them sticking out either end. But I like to cut them a bit shorter because frankly they're grey. And they're a bit boring. And I'm just going to cut it with my scissors. So that is that one cut. And then I'll show you what I do next. Sorry about that, my phone rang. Okay, so I've cut the pipe bag into sort of just a little bit less. Oh, let me turn it around again. Uh, a little bit less than the actual diamond painting is, just to say, because I prefer to have it on the inside. And pipe bagging tends to come with sort of a split already started. And that is for the purposes of, of course, wrapping it around pipes. But it's also helpful because quite often I can actually do this with my finger once I've got it started. You can just try not to do it too fast. You'll give yourself like a carpet burn on your finger. Not nice. Um, but you can then just sort of rip the rest of it all the way down. And it just sort of comes apart. So if you do it too quick, it will feel like a carpet burn. And then... So the end that I'm wanting to sort of roll up for later, I will slide this pipe lagging onto. Sometimes it's easier to put it on and slide it up. Other times it's easier to actually do each section. You'll find out what works for you according to what you have. And then I basically just roll the canvas around it. Now, because this painting came to me with it rolled inwards, that's the reason I'm following rolling inwards rather than outwards. If the diamond painting had come to me the other way, I would have rolled it the other way. I may as well keep hold of the canvas in the way it's used to being, so the way it was shipped, it was, you know, stored until it was shipped and it was stored until I'd done it. Some paintings will come the other way. Do whichever works for you. And I find then that that helps, you know, if especially when you turn round. So when you done this section and you find you're hitting it with your stomach and, and you either put this in front of you, maybe, maybe you'll have it like that. And, and diamond paint that way, or maybe you'll have it on your lap. That pipe lagging stops the diamond painting squooshing. So if I decided to have it just sat on my table like this and diamond paint down like this and use it like a little rest, the pipe lagging stops the diamond painting from squooshing and getting lines in it because it's got that pipe lagging inside. Um, and that's the main reason that I use it because I will find sometimes I'm only doing a little section 
or you know it's warm or you know just whatever reason I don't want it on my lap so I will actually still just leave it on the table and I will diamond paint next to it and, and then I'll move it up and I'll do it like that. Um, sometimes it's like, no, actually, I want, I want to lean on the diamond painting itself and I pop it on my lap. It's really up to you how you want to work with that, but I do recommend the pipe lagging for that reason. What I then also do is I will also cut a second piece of pipe lagging ready for the other side. So this one is thin enough to just cut with a pair of scissors, which is handy. So I will also cut another piece for this side. The only difference once it has diamonds on it, always roll it out. So this will get rolled this way with diamonds facing out. The reason being is because of course they're bumpy, you start rolling them in and they're gonna hit each other and dislodge them, move them, all the rest of it. And I will use this to store large paintings sometimes that I have completed that maybe won't lie flat. I will use this to store them. And the reason being is very similar to this. If you're leaning on it, yeah, it may start flattening, you may start getting lines and creases. The weight of the diamonds, when you've rolled them up on each other, could start making your canvas crease. And that's purely just due to the weight of the diamonds that you've put on them. Once you've rolled a bit further and further, they will just start flattening and flattening and flattening some more. In fact, I have one here. So this is a diamond painting that I did. I didn't have any pipe lagging at the time. I have rolled it and it was rolled nicely like that. And it's been popped um, on my little shelf. And can you see it's already started going more of an oval than a circle. It has started flattening itself due to the weight of the diamonds. So this one, now I have some pipe lagging, I will put pipe lagging in this and this will help it stay upright. It is too big, this one, to put in a, in a folder, in a big A1, A1 type art folder that I have. It's too big. Um, it's long, again, it's like this one long and thin. Um, so I will put some pipe lagging inside this and sort of rewrap it and that will stop it getting to the point that it squashes that much that it start causing lines in the painting. Because we don't want that sort of stuff. So that will go on this side once I've started and I will start of course rolling it outwards. And then I will have a situation where this either sits on the edge of my desk, sometimes it will hang off. You can also pop some clips. So I have some, as you may have seen on that painting, I have some very, very small bulldog clips. Sometimes I will clip on, sometimes with a paper clip actually, but I will clip the diamond painting to that and sometimes once it's been rolled up a bit, for example, I will stop clipping the pipe lagging and I will just clip diamond painting to diamond painting. So you see, I'm not actually touching the pipe lagging there. It can move in and out. I'm just clipping diamond painting to diamond painting, which means it can hang off my table without unrolling. So that's also another trick. If you're working on a big one and you like it to hang off the edge of your table, but it's not long enough to say hit the floor or hit something that you've constructed. I could construct stuff, but my table needs to be able to be folded up and put away. Wrap it round, pipe lag in. And when you get to a certain point, say even this much, then actually just clip you might need bigger ones when you get to this point, but just clip all the diamond painting edge to the diamond painting edge. So this is gonna stop it from flattening on itself 
and this is going to stop it from unrolling and do that on either side a couple of places if you like and that is how I manage with a big diamond painting on a small space so for this one I'm going to start from here my table is probably probably a little bit shorter than that it's possibly that deep so what I will do is I will just leave that sat on the edge of my table because I'm always working nearest to me anyway it needs to stretch um, and I will start working here and then I will unroll it a bit say until my stomach starts hitting this and then I'll turn it around so that is the pipe lagging method or you can use prawn noodles for prepping your canvas what I also like to do when I have diamond paintings with clear covers is I like to change them for opaque ones and the reason for that as I say is I will start chasing a colour so I could potentially start here and then I'll be like oh I can just see a bit up there oh there's just one or two there oh there's just some over here and then I'll be like oh I can see some up there and before you know it it's chaos and I work well in chaos so I like to use these cover release papers and um, I got them in a six by four size you can get them in a four sheets and I store them in a little passport holder because it's pretty so why not so what I like to do is I like to section off now on big paint on smaller paintings sorry I will section off the whole painting I will just section off the whole 30 by 40 painting, get rid of the clear cover, jobs are good and see you later, and that's that. On big paintings, I like to work differently. Oh, I like the fact that how that goes. Sometimes I have to overlap them a bit more. But I like to do two rows. So let me get all these on. I always work in rows of two because who wants to who well I know I don't want to have that many different pieces of cover paper across the whole diamond painting these don't bend as well as the, as the clear covers because of course they start popping up and then you you run the risk of affecting what's underneath and stuff so what I do is I say I cover two rows I then will cut my clear cover part way over so can you see my scissors are part way over that second row and I will cut that off so that is that gone this is overlapped because I don't want any risk of getting any bits on this paper and I will pick a side and I will work on that section now if this doesn't line up quite nicely like this one doesn't like it's halfway over a diamond I'll peel this one up you know I could peel one or two around it and I'll line it up just a little bit better I won't do it at the beginning I'll just do it now and then that is the section that I'll work on now you may prefer bigger sheets. I may find that I'm going to be doing quite a bit. I may actually start with two sections and that's the bit that I'll do. Depends on how much time I have for the evening. Um, and then once I've finished, so I'll always work in a row. It's always the way I work on big paintings. So I'll work on a row. Once all my five sheets are done or even after I finish each, each section, I will move that sheet of paper up. So you will often find I'll have a big painting that may have one here and the rest down here, and this will have diamonds on it. Um, and I will just, I will take that next one off and I will put it up here. And I'll continue through. Once I get to start working on this row, I will trim that top cover paper again so that this isn't getting in my way while I'm painting. I'll then trim this because by then they'll all have cover sheet papers on and then I move on to the next row. Um, what I also like to do if you are you know not necessarily wanting to do a big project because you feel as though it's going to take too long 
they do take a while, but don't see a big project as the only project you have to do. So I like to set myself sort of, I like to mix it up with the diamond paintings that I'm doing. And how I mix it up can vary according to, you know, how quick I may need this one finished compared compared to others that I'm doing. But I like to have some smaller ones, 30 by 40s, maybe a 40 by 50, sometimes, sometimes not. And I will either say to myself, right, once I've done one row, I will switch over to another painting and then I'll switch back to this one and then I'll switch back to the other one. So sometimes I do a row per painting. So of course a 30 by 40 may only have three rows in it. So of course, by the time I've done three rows on this, I've finished the 30 by 40, but that's fine because then I'll have another project and this one will still be ongoing. Um, but that is personal preference. Some people like to do just one painting and no more. But that's the way I like to work. So this painting has got its eight pieces of cover sheet. This will be used all the way through until it's finished. I have two pieces of pipe lagging. One is already in the painting. The other one I'll bring in later. And then I've always got clips if I need them as well. So I hope that's been helpful on working with a big diamond painting in a smaller space. Um, don't view a big diamond painting necessarily as the big diamond painting. You're just, you're still always doing a section at a time. The difference is a big diamond painting will just take longer. And if you want the satisfaction of having completed something, then maybe think about doing two or even three diamond paintings at the same time so that you've got smaller ones for the satisfaction and then the big one to enjoy the process and when you get near the end you've got even more satisfaction. So yeah I hope that was helpful um, to people but I do thank you so much for watching and my minions is all kitted up now so I can get going uh, but I'll speak to you all again soon.